Welcome to Industry Headlines. Kevin Kaufman and Fred Weaver, glad to be back with you for another look at the last seven days or so of industry headlines in real estate industry. Yeah. So the big news this week has to do with money, Kevin. Yeah. This episode or this particular podcast is all about money. This, this episode, this podcast is brought to you by Wall Street this week. Wall Street. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, third quarter earnings reports. Fredfin came out with theirs and talk about some of their strategies in the real estate market, how those have affected earnings. Talk about Realogy. They were in the news for a couple things this week. Not only yeah. earnings, but also selling off some one of their, can I call it ancillary companies? I don't really know what else you call it. I don't know. One of their, one of their assets. How about that? Sure. Um, EXP, uh, also in the news this week. And uh, SoftBank in the news a lot this week. Just money, 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 right? All this stuff on money. Uh, and then Compass also made the news. Didn't obviously report any uh, earnings reports because they're not publicly traded yet. But um, they, they did make some changes. So. Soon enough. All right, so let's talk about Redfin first. So they beat expectations. They posted a $239 million in revenue for the third quarter this year. Like, that's a lot of so, money. Yeah, it's not just the dollar amount. It's, the, it's that they beat the expectations by, like, that's, like, pretty, beat them up pretty good. By 26%. So, yeah. Uh, big number to me, though, is 70% jump. Year, year over, over year. year. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah, that is really interesting. Um, so anyway, um, Redfin, not the biggest behemoth out there. They've got a good name in the industry, but from an agent count standpoint, not, not the biggest. But um, those earnings reports suggest they're doing something right. So obviously, they got Redfin Now and Redfin Direct going on, and they're expanding those programs. And I think that had to do with, with some of the revenue increases. So it's be interesting to watch uh, what goes on there with them. Yeah, so Realogy posted a net loss this quarter of $70 million off of a $1.6 billion with a B uh, revenue quarter. So like, that's a lot of both of those numbers are big. Um, yeah. But the loss was driven primarily from the impairment of NRT. Uh, Realogy is kind of their, it's what they owe. Like it's their broker mm -hmm. owned or their company owned brokerages, if you will, the non-franchise. So net loss of $70 million for the third quarter. Probably not what they were hoping for. That's a big swing from last year over year where they actually made $103 million in profit. Um, yeah, because generally speaking, the third quarter is more healthy for companies like Realogy yeah. right, than, than the fourth quarter is. So this is, this is interesting. So sort of, I mean, maybe you won't call it a direct response, but a response to some of the earnings stuff. Can we call it that? Well, I think, honestly, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Okay. All right. Uh, my hunch is that this is more of a strategic plan. Okay. Because you don't just put together a sale like this overnight. Okay. Um, so I think what, what's happened is Realogy is selling their global relocation business, uh, Cardis, to another company who I'm not even going to try to say their name, Serva. I don't know what the hell that even stands for. Um, but essentially, they're selling it for $400 million, 375 in cash now, another $25 million. I, I, you know, when I read that, by the way, I was like, you're gonna give them three hundred seventy-five million dollars today, but you need a like you need a couple extra months or years for the other twenty-five million. Weird. Like, okay. Um, at any rate, so they're you know the, the big thing with uh, with Realogy is they've traditionally been a very profitable company, but they've got a lot of debt, yeah. uh, upwards of like three point five billion, if that number is correctly that I read, and so that they'll use this cash to basically start paying down their debt. Yeah, so interesting. I mean, I, I like the move. I like what they're doing. They're simplifying some stuff. Um, Serva, what I read, they are somewhat affiliated with Allied Van Lines. Yeah, so I, believe they I don't know that company, but I think they own that. Like you see those trucks yeah, on, they, on the road, right? Yeah. So they're helping people move cross country. It seems like a good decision there. Um, interesting to note, we've talked recently about Realogy's uh, partnerships with Amazon and AARP last week. Yep. Um, those are not included in the deal. So that stuff is outside of the car to sale. Oh, so totally. just interesting to note, right? Like they're, they're building their own referral programs that essentially aren't, you know, uh, are going to bring more business in while they're also selling one off that brought business in. Yeah. So interesting stuff going on there. EXP, I thought was really interesting from a standpoint of they actually, so, um, so Redfin obviously beat some projections. Realogy went the opposite way, didn't beat some projections. EXP beat projections as well. Yeah, in a big way. So, uh, <clears throat> sorry. So EXP Realty uh, beat the consensus estimates from Wall Street. Uh, they posted a net loss of three cents per share on revenue of $282 million. Now, I want to be, just be really clear about what that loss is. First of all, that loss is significantly smaller than year over year, last year's third quarter. Mm -hmm. However, again, that also includes the write down for 
stock, stock awards, awards issued, yeah. meaning they've issued so many awards over the years, they give them some things you earn them for free, they have to take that as a loss on the books. So it's actually a very, it's a net, it's a net positive for the company. Correct, Again, yeah, cash not, on hand keeps going up. Um, uh, unlike if I could say Realogy, like Realogy's debt, you know, keeps, right. keeps going up. So like different differences. I'm not, I'm not knocking Realogy over EXP. They're just different. They're set up very differently. Yep. And so yeah. I think, uh, you know, one of the quotes from uh, Jeff Whiteside, CFO, mm -hmm. was that, you know, in addition to the revenue growth of nearly 80% year over year, 80% revenue growth year over that's year, huge. that's huge. And so they've, you know, improvement in managing their allocation of the capital. Um, I also know too, Verbella, the company that yes. we bought about a year ago uh, that EXP now owns wholly, you know, won some more contracts with the government. So Correct. that technology, part of their income stream now is is using Verbella at, like for other companies. Yep. So interesting stuff there. Um, you know, the knock on EXP is like they don't, they're not, they're not making money. Well, cash on hands going up. Um, however, obviously there is a, a net loss going on, but they're, they're shrinking that gap incredibly. Um, so it'd be interesting to watch. And then, um, so SoftBank, not a, a real estate franchise or, but they have heavy investment in real estate. Um, they also had heavy investment in WeWork. Uh, I just thought it was interesting. Figure we'd, we quickly mention it, that um, they reported a $4.6 billion um, loss, I believe it was, in stock value after WeWork's failed public offering. I saw someone someone tweeted something like, you know, if you if you just burned $100,000 in cash every day since like 1996, you still wouldn't have burned that much cash. As they just lost in the last quarter. Um, that's a huge loss. And I mean, they went so far as to say the CEO that he regrets their investment into WeWork, which yeah. is substantial. I mean, that's a yeah. substantial investment. So if you don't know, SoftBank has a large investment into Compass. And that brings us to our, our last uh, news here that we'll share with you today. Compass made some major changes to their stock option program. So yeah. I we talk about that too. This is a money episode today. Yeah, big changes to their agent equity program, um, according to uh, apparently some memos that were obtained by Inman News uh, from inside the company. But the company is shifting from offering equity stock options to an option to buy stock in the future from having a strike price, excuse me, to just mm -hmm. being able to buy it now to restrict yeah. stock. So these units. are restricted stock units, right? Similar that, that to what, in, similar to what EXP it's already exactly does, what EXP right? does. Yeah, that best in a couple of years. Or I thought was interesting, the memo that was obtained said that would also bet in the event of an IPO, would best in the yeah. event of an IPO. So the key. Yeah. IPO thing. IPO is going to happen. It's, it's a matter right? of when, it's a, right? it's a matter of when. So it'll be interesting to see. So anyway, that's what's going on um, in the real estate world, uh, specific to money and what's happening uh, around us. Pretty interesting stuff. Um, um, Keller Williams didn't uh, release any earnings reports, so I don't have anything to share with you there. But I think there were some shakeups. Maybe we can talk about those next week on Industry Headlines. It's guaranteed. So anyway, thanks for joining us today for Industry Headlines. We'll see you back here next week.